How do you feel? 16. You feel like you're 16? That's what I feel like. So many rumors out there, you know? Rumors about yeah. what? Well, like, are you dying? No. Jan Michael Vincent was one of the most sensational and dashing actors of the 1980s, best known for his role as the adventurous helicopter pilot Stringfellow Hawk in the TV series Airwolf. We're going, huh? We're going, yeah, we're going. You're crazy. I'm gonna hit it. <laughs> Jan Michael Vincent had it all. A magnificent physique, a captivating smile, and a lucrative career in Hollywood. But his life was not as glamorous as it seemed. Behind the scenes, he was battling demons that eventually ruined his reputation and health. But how did he fall from grace so abruptly? And what were the horrifying secrets he hid from the world? In this video, we will uncover the shocking truth about the tragic demise and death of Jan Michael Vincent. Early Life Born in 1944 in Denver, Colorado, Jan Michael had a family tree with more than a few skeletons in the closet. It seems that criminal activity ran in his bloodline, with his grandfather and uncles making a name for themselves as notorious bank robbers in the 1920s and 1930s. The family tree was more like a family crime spree, with uncles meeting bloody ends at the hands of law enforcement and his grandfather dabbling in both bank robbery and counterfeiting. But with all this dark legacy, Jan Michael's father chose a different path, breaking the cycle of crime by joining the U.S. Army. However, it seems that Jan Michael was determined to carry on the rebellious tradition of his outlaw relatives. Despite his father's honorable service, Jan Michael's wild streak emerged early on as he rebelled against authority and sought a life that mirrored his grandfather's free-spirited ways. After graduating high school in 1963, Jan Michael's father had hoped that he would take over the family's sign shop. However, Jan Michael had other plans. I put my surfboard in the car, he recounted, and left. Ventura College was the next stop on Jan Michael's journey, but even that couldn't hold his attention for long. As fate would have it, the registration clerk at the college decided to take an extended lunch break, leaving Jan Michael with no choice but to take matters into his own hands. With his tuition fee of $200 in hand, he set off on a wild and reckless escapade to Mexico. Little did Jan Michael know that his impulsive decision to flee from his father's expectations would set him on a course that would lead to unforeseen opportunities and adventures. But isn't that the beauty of life? the unpredictable twists and turns that shape our destinies in ways we could never imagine. So join us as we uncover the remarkable chain of events that led Jan Michael to a fateful encounter that would catapult him into a world beyond his wildest dreams. The Unconventional Rise of Jan Michael Fate has a funny way of leading us down unexpected paths, and for Jan Michael, it seemed to have a rather twisted sense of humor. Without the benefit of a formal education, he found himself treading the same career path as his father, despite his best efforts to avoid it. It was almost as if destiny had a hand in guiding him towards a different but equally challenging journey. After a bout of what can only be described as Mexican madness, Jan Michael made an unexpected turn and joined the California Army National Guard, mirroring his father's earlier commitment to the U.S. Army. While service to his country became a shared experience with his father, it was not the only thing they had in common. In the 1980s, Jan Michael rose to fame as one of Hollywood's most strikingly attractive stars. His rugged good looks, reminiscent of a Greek god, set him apart from the sea of beautiful faces in Tinseltown. It was almost as if he had won the genetic lottery, inheriting not just his father's penchant for military service, but also his jaw-dropping, eye-popping, tongue-wagging good looks. This rare combination of qualities opened doors for him that most could only dream of at such a young age. The 1960s in California were a time of surf, sand, and endless opportunities for young men to indulge in the carefree lifestyle of the era. But the fascinating thing is that, with all the numerous cool guys and beach bums, Jan Michael actually stood out like a diamond in the rough. And it didn't just stoop at the fact that he was good-looking. His looks favored him as a keen-eyed talent scout, spotted him on a California beach, 
and immediately recognized his potential for the silver screen. Despite lacking any formal training in acting, Jan Michael's magnetic charm catapulted him into the spotlight. His undeniable allure allowed him to bypass the traditional audition process, propelling him straight into coveted roles in hit series and films. It was a meteoric rise that left many seasoned actors scratching their heads in bewilderment. But it wasn't just his professional life that saw a whirlwind of change. In 1968, amidst his burgeoning career and chiseled abs that could rival any Greek statue, Jan Michael found himself walking down the aisle with Bonnie Poorman. Their union marked the beginning of a tumultuous romance that would keep tabloids buzzing for years to come. And when their daughter, Amber, arrived in 1973, it added another layer of complexity to their already tumultuous relationship. Despite the personal challenges he faced, Jan Michael's career continued to soar. His name became synonymous with Hollywood heartthrob, and his presence on screen commanded attention. After all, when destiny gives you another chance, you grab it with both hands and make it your own. Jan Michael's golden career. In the late 1960s, Jan Mikkel made his mark on the small screen, appearing in TV shows like Dragnet 1968 and The Banane Splits. His muscly charm and undeniable talent landed him a starring role in the soap opera The Survivors, where he shared the screen with the likes of George Hamilton and Lana Turner. Although the series was short-lived, it was just the beginning of Jan Michael's rise to stardom. The big screen beckoned, and Jan Michael answered the call with a role opposite legends John Wayne and Rock Hudson in the Undefeated. Set in the post-Civil War period, the film showcased Jan Michael's versatility and earned him praise from critics, despite its lackluster performance at the box office. And as the 1970s dawned, Jan Michael continued to make waves in the entertainment industry. His performances in TV movies like Tribes and Going Home garnered critical acclaim, setting the stage for his foray into feature films. From sharing the screen with Charles Bronson in The Mechanic to starring in Disney's The World's Greatest Athlete, Jan Michael proved that he could hold his own alongside Hollywood heavyweights. But it was his daring role in Buster and Billy that truly shocked audiences. Embracing his boldness, Jan Michael fearlessly bared it all in the romantic drama, solidifying his reputation as an actor unafraid to push boundaries. The 1980s brought even more success for Jan Michael, with starring roles in big-budget Hollywood movies like Defiance and Hard Country. His on-screen charisma and undeniable talent continued to captivate audiences, culminating in his role in the TV miniseries The Winds of War. Jan Michael Vincent's career was a testament to his unwavering dedication and undeniable talent. From TV shows to blockbuster movies, he left an indelible mark on the entertainment industry and will always be remembered as a golden star in Hollywood's constellation. But there was one other thing he was known for. Daring stunts. When it comes to daring stunts and heart-stopping performances, Jan Michael Vincent was a force to be reckoned with. Known for his fearless attitude both on and off the screen, Vincent captivated audiences with his devil-may-care approach to life and his undeniable charm. But it wasn't just about the thrill of the stunt for Jan Michael. He expected his paychecks to match his fearless endeavors, and more often than not, they did. With his unspeakably pretty mug gracing screens everywhere, Vincent quickly capitalized on his Adonis-like appearance, cashing in on roles that showcased his magnetic presence. One such role was in 1977's Damnation Alley, for which he famously cashed a cool $1,000 check. But it wasn't just about the money for Jan Michael. To his adoring fans, he appeared to have it all, including a loving family. His daughter Amber even made her own silver screen debut in 1978's Big Wednesday, sharing an on-screen moment with her father. But behind the facade of a happy family, a lurking secret threatened to unravel John Michael's seemingly perfect life. What was he hiding? Well, it appears that despite the closeness portrayed on screen, 
Jan Michael's relationship with his daughter was far from perfect. In fact, it's rumored that they were estranged for most of her life, casting a shadow over his seemingly idyllic family life. And while his career soared with iconic roles like Stringfellow Hawk in Airwolf, the cracks in his personal life began to show. But before we check out these cracks, let's continue with his remarkable days in the industry. The Pinnacle of His Career In the world of espionage and high-flying action, Jan Michael found his most memorable role as the pilot Stringfellow Hawk in Airwolf. Co-starring with Ernest Borgnine, the series became immensely popular both in the U.S. and overseas, cementing John Michael's status as a household name. Despite his rebellious nature, Jan Michael embodied the strict U.S. Army attitude of his character, adding an ironic twist to his iconic role. But it wasn't just his acting chops that set Jan Michael apart. According to his Airwolf co-star Ernest Borgnine, the man had a photographic memory that would put most computers to shame. Borgnine claimed that Jan Michael could glance at a script once and be ready to roll camera. Now that's a talent worth saluting. With fame came fortune, and Jan Michael was raking in a cool $200,000 per episode, a sum that would make even the most seasoned Hollywood heavyweights envious. But as the saying goes, easy come, easy go. Before long, Jan Michael's personal demons began to rear their ugly heads, threatening to bring him crashing back to Earth. From Airwolf to Ground Zero. By the third season of Airwolf, it was clear that Jan Michael's vices were getting the better of him. His on-set antics had everyone from his co-stars to studio executives shaking their heads in disbelief. Lines were forgotten, faces were unrecognizable, and standing upright seemed like a Herculean task for the once dashing leading man. The delays and difficulties caused by Jan Michael's problems resulted in the series going over budget, a surefire way to land on Hollywood's blacklist. As whispers of Jan Michael's destructive addiction to alcohol and other substances began to spread throughout Tinseltown, it became apparent that his fame had become a double-edged sword. While his face and body still graced magazine covers and TV screens, the stories about his behavior were far from glamorous. The final blow came when Airwolf's producers decided that enough was enough. After just three seasons, they bid adieu to Jan Michael and moved forward with a fresh cast. But was Jan Michael really the biggest problem on the set? As it turns out, he wasn't. While he may have had a penchant for performing his own stunts, it proved to be a risky move on the set of Airwolf. Tragedy struck when his stunt double crashed a helicopter during filming, leading to a devastating inferno that claimed the stunt double's life. It was a harrowing incident that left the crew reeling from the loss. And if that wasn't enough, the production seemed to be plagued by an eerie curse. Even after Jan Michael's departure, Airwolf continued to be shrouded in tragedy. One of the show's helicopters found its way into the hands of German ambulance pilots only to meet a tragic fate in a fatal crash that claimed the lives of all three people on board. Speculations ran wild about the cursed nature of the project, with some even attributing it to bad blood in John Michael's lineage. But was there truly something sinister lurking behind the scenes of Airwolf? Or it was just a case of bad decisions and unfortunate incidents? We'll leave that up to you to ponder. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. After all, truth is often stranger than fiction in the world of Hollywood. As if things couldn't get any worse, 1986 proved to be a year of personal turmoil for Jan Michael. Not only did he bid adieu to Airwolf, but he also saw his marriage slip through his fingers. While the details of his first marriage remained shrewded in mystery, it was clear that it had been a turbulent relationship. Reports of Jan Michael's volatile behavior during his addiction fueled episodes painted a grim picture of his personal life. From brutal bar fights to divorce, it seemed like Jan Michael was caught in a storm of his own making. 
However, with all the chaos, a glimmers of hope finally showed up. Despite the cancellation of Airwolf and the personal upheaval, Jan Michael found directors who were still willing to take a chance on him. Destiny may have led him down a path he never anticipated, but he embraced it with the same tenacity and charisma, and that's what made him a star. From an appearance in an episode of Hotel in 1986, to roles in made-for-TV movies like Six Against the Rock and Tarzan in Manhattan in 1987 and 1989, Jan Michael managed to keep his foot in the door of the industry. His promise to seek help for his addictions seemed to yield some positive results, paving the way for leading roles in the late 1980s. Things seem to be going fine at the moment, but one thing's for sure, his story is far from over. Jan Michael also got leading roles after everything that had happened. One of these leading roles was in Hit List, a 1989 thriller directed by William Lustig. Jan seemed to be on a roll as he took the leading role in Alienator in 1990 and in the Australian thriller Demonstone. Sadly, these roles didn't last long either, and it appeared that Jan's days of appearing in major Hollywood movies were over by the 1990s. But there was one thing that was not over. As the years went by, Jan's dependence on drugs and alcohol continued, making him less easy to direct. He found himself slipping further down the cast lists, with only slasher movies and erotic fare looking to hire him. In The Life and Times of Grizzly Adams, Jan played a trapper whose listing was even further down than the named animals that featured in the film. Jan Michael Vincent's last movie role came in 2003 with a cameo part in White Boy. His last TV appearance had been a guest spot in 1997 in one episode of Nash Bridges. But was it just alcohol and drugs? Well, it was more than that. A Broken Life Jan Michael Vincent certainly seemed to appreciate his good luck in the early years of his movie career. However, as he became more accustomed to the high life, things took a turn for the worse. The allure of drugs and alcohol proved too tempting for the young actor, leading to a downward spiral that would ultimately unravel his personal and professional life. Working with Jan Michael on set during the height of his addiction was not for the faint of heart. His co-stars found themselves in precarious situations, with his 1987 co-star Ray Parker Jr. describing the experience as nothing short of crazy. And that was putting it mildly. As Jan Michael's career began to crumble under the weight of his addiction, he doubled down on his destructive habits. Unfortunately, his besotted state often led to outbursts of violence, as Parker Jr. discovered firsthand when he was allegedly struck with a wheelchair during the filming of Enemy Territory. Despite his electrifying presence on screen, not every director was willing to tolerate the turmoil that accompanied Jan Michael. Some went to extreme lengths to mitigate the impact of his condition, with one director even filming most of his scenes solo in anticipation of having to replace him. It wasn't just one or two directors who struggled to work with Jan Michael. It seemed to be a widespread challenge. Harry Bromley Davenport, who directed him in Extro 2 The Second Encounter, famously remarked on the actor's extreme difficulty on set, even having to feed him lines for every scene. But why did audiences and producers continue to tolerate Jan Michael's destructive behavior? Well, let's face it. He still had the face of a hunky angel. However, all of that changed. But how? In 1996, something unexpected happened that changed everything for Jan Michael and took the one thing he had from him, his face, Jan Michael experienced a car crash that left both him and his housekeeper severely injured. But here's the twist. While his housekeeper's injuries were bad, Jan Michael's were even worse. The poor guy suffered a broken neck and some serious facial damage. To add insult to injury, the paramedics had to perform a life-saving procedure on him, which ended up damaging his vocal cords and leaving him with a permanently raspy voice. Now, most people would take some time off to recover from such a traumatic experience. But not Jan Michael. He decided to embrace his new, disfigured look and carry on with filming Redline. 
that's some serious dedication. In the film, he proudly sports his real-life swollen and scarred face and even rocks his hospital ID bracelet for authenticity. But it wasn't just his career that took a hit. His married life also went downhill fast. His second wife, Joanne Robinson, didn't stick around for the rough patch. In 1998, she filed for divorce, and it wasn't just because he was no longer the prettiest man alive. She had a good reason to leave him. The question is, what could have possibly gone down to drive her to that point? Let's find out the shocking truth. So, it turns out that the earlier reports about John Michael being a bit of a menace, when he had a few too many drinks were actually quite the understatement. In fact, according to his ex-wife, Robinson, Jan Michael was nothing short of a monster. But was he really? Well, she did accuse him of attacking her multiple times and even threatening to end her life. But hold on, because there's more where that came from. Fortunately for Robinson, the court actually sided with her. And before granting the divorce, the judge slapped Jan Michael with a restraining order, keeping him a safe 300 yards away from their Malibu home. But just because Robinson was out of harm's way, it didn't mean that other women were in the clear. Turns out, Jan Michael's ex-wife wasn't the only one to accuse him of some pretty savage behavior. Back in 1986, he got in trouble with the law for an incident at his own home. But he managed to dodge a prison sentence when his lawyer spun a yarn about the woman tripping and falling on a telephone cord. But his laundry list of offenses just kept on growing. In 2000, a judge ruled against him and ordered him to pay an ex-girlfriend a whopping $374,000. And what was the catalyst for this hefty sum, you ask? Well, the ex-girlfriend alleged that he had attacked her while she was pregnant. But did he really do it? Sadly, he couldn't prove otherwise. Fast forward to the year 2000, and Jan Michael's wild lifestyle had clearly caught up with him. With his looks and acting opportunities fading fast, his appearance in Escape to Grizzly Mountain went by virtually unnoticed. As his career sputtered to a halt and his personal life fell apart, Jan Michael made a quiet retreat from the glitz and glamour of Hollywood. But something exciting finally happened in his life. He found love. Against all odds, Jan Michael found love once again with his third wife, Patricia Christ, and settled into a peaceful home in Mississippi. When a reporter finally caught up with him years later, he simply shrugged and said, I'm just laying low. But little did he know, fate had one more twist in store for him. Jan's life was quite the roller coaster ride, with drunk driving being a recurring theme. His first run in with the law was back in 1988, but he managed to dodge prison time by agreeing to enter rehab. However, the 1990s brought a string of serious auto accidents, with three major crashes in just a span of five years. It seems Jan was not only a danger on the roads, but also to those who cared about him. As if one brush with the law wasn't enough, Jan found himself facing drunk driving charges again in 1996. Once more, he opted for rehab and probation, but by 2000, he was back in hot water. This time, he violated his probation by getting caught intoxicated in public on not just one, not two, but three separate occasions. His punishment? A 60-day stay in Orange County Jail. With all his addictions, he definitely couldn't avoid the health consequences. Health conditions. Jan's decades-long battle with addiction took a serious toll on his well-being. In a candid confession to the National Enquirer in 2014, he revealed the grim aftermath of his struggles. In 2012, an infection stemming from peripheral artery disease forced him to bid farewell to his right leg. Once a statuesque bronzed Adonis, Jan spent his remaining years sporting a prosthetic limb and getting acquainted with life in a wheelchair. It took him two whole years to open up about the amputation publicly, admitting that he considered himself lucky to have made it through the operation. Jan Michael Vincent's Tragic Demise 
Jan Michael Vincent was a man whose life was a roller coaster of highs and lows, quite literally. You see, one of the downsides of dabbling in recreational drugs is the potential for a little something called bradycardia. For those who are not familiar with the medical terminology, bradycardia is essentially a fancy way of saying a person's heart rate is slower than a sloth on a Sunday morning, which also means the person has a slow heart rate. Now, for the average person with a clean bill of health, this condition can be managed and medicated. But for those already teetering on the edge of poor health, it's like playing a game of Russian roulette with your ticker. And, unfortunately for Mr. Vincent, his dalliance with drugs led him down this treacherous path. In 2019, while in a hospital in North Carolina, Jan Michael Vincent suffered a cardiac arrest at the ripe age of 74. The culprit? You guessed it. Bradycardia induced by his drug use. It's a stark reminder that even the most seemingly invincible among us are not immune to the consequences of our actions. But let's not dwell solely on the somber aspects of Vincent's life. After all, he was a man who burst onto the scene with all the promise and potential of a shooting star, only to fizzle out in a blaze of poor choices and missed opportunities. Despite several turmoil and tragedy, there's no denying that Jan Michael Vincent was a force to be reckoned with in the world of acting. He was, without a doubt, one of the finest talents of his time. His performances were nothing short of mesmerizing, leaving audiences captivated and critics singing his praises. So as we bid adieu to this enigmatic figure, let us remember him not only for his untimely demise, but also for the indelible mark he left on the world of entertainment. Jean Michael Vincent may have succumbed to the perils of fame and folly, but his legacy as a formidable actor will endure for generations to come. Out of all of Jan Michael's movies, which one managed to captivate your attention the most? Let's know in the comments section. Thanks for watching. For a more thrilling story, click now on the next video that pops up on your screen.